Hey everyone, and welcome to Up Next in Commerce. I'm your host, Stephanie, CEO at Mission. And today we have a very tasty episode. I have Gail Becker joining us, who's the founder and CEO of Kali Power. Gail, welcome to the podcast. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, I'm very excited. So I have a special love for Kali Power because oh. my mother-in-law has celiac disease and okay. 10 years ago, there was nothing. Like we couldn't find anything good. It was really hard. We were trying to bake all our own stuff. There wasn't good flowers. And so I have a, uh, there's a very special place in my heart when Kali Power came out and we were like, oh, this is so great. <laughs> so I want to say thank you, first of all, for the amazing product. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure I should be the one thanking you, but, that, but, that, but there you go. <laughs> it can go both ways. We can just have a okay, whole podcast it. about that. This yeah, is great. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> so before we dive into Kali Power and you starting it and where it's at today, I actually wanted to start with your background because I think it's very interesting. I want to talk about your upbringing and your parents and kind of, you know, where did Gail come from? Uh, it is probably the most obscure route that you one could possibly take. Um, I'm a first generation American. Uh, both my parents were Holocaust survivors and they came to this country with literally nothing. And my father built a small business and uh, it was really when he passed away that I decided to uh, turn my life and sort of follow in his entrepreneurial footsteps. The, the, but when I look back at my childhood, the things that I think maybe influenced me, but of course you had no idea at the time, yeah. you know, I think because of my parents' background and because they never really had food growing up or enough food, that food always played a really important role in our lives. We all sat down to dinner uh, every night. Uh, even if, you know, money was tight, you never scrimped on food. You always got the best food you could do, you could get. And quite frankly, you always showed people you love them by cooking for them. And so food always had a really important place, including you never threw it away. So my mother used to put all kinds of scraps into the freezer, which I'm pretty sure is how I ended up in frozen food. <laughs> that's great. So what kind of lessons do you remember? I mean, you're saying once your dad passed away, that's when you're like, now's the time I need to do something. Like what was kind of running through your head to know like that was the moment that you needed to change everything? Uh, it was really this like, uh, you know, uh, this culmination of feelings, to be honest with you. I had worked in corporate America for many years probably too many. And um, I became really disenchanted, right? Very, very, very uh, sort of uninspired by what I was doing. And, you know, most notably, I just stopped caring. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you stop caring, that's when you run into trouble. And so I knew, <clears throat> I knew I wanted to do something different, but I didn't really know what that was. Um, and it wasn't until the passing of my father that I thought, God, I have got to do something more meaningful. I have got to do something that's going to help people in some small way. Um, and I also wanted to do something that, you know, I could build on my own. And uh, so it was really all of those things put together that made me decide to chuck it all and bet it on a vegetable. Yep. That's great. So <laughs> what did the early days look like of, you know, having the aha moment of like, I'm going to make cauliflower crust pizza. Like, what did that actually look like? Uh, it looked like a big mess is what it looked like. Um, I, uh, I did a little bit of research, not, not a lot, certainly not as much as I should have. Um, I stumbled across cauliflower crust pizza one, one day on the internet, there were, you know, over 500,000 recipes the day I checked, I made one and it was okay. And I just thought it was an extraordinary amount of work. Yeah. And, uh, when my son asked me if I was going to make it again, I said, there's no freaking way it took 90 minutes to make a pizza crust mm -hmm. after a full day of work. I mean, and who has time for that? And isn't it kind of insulting that people actually yeah. expected us to? Yeah. So it was really that, you know, sort of frustration and um, that that led me to start Collie Power. And what it looked like is ironically with with the pandemic, I'm, I'm not very far from my home office where I act like, you know, 20 feet from my home office where I started Kali Power. And it was very, it was very lonely in those days, right? It was just literally me in the office um, with the postman, you know, occasionally when he would bring by uh, packages and it was very lonely, but it was also very, um, 
very sort of freeing in the sense that nobody knew what I was doing. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really have anything to lose. Like I didn't, like I was just sort of working in secret. So there was, I didn't put anything out there. Nobody knew what I was up to. And I really enjoyed that time because I couldn't fail if no one knew what I was doing. Mm -hmm. Yep. And both your sons have celiac. That was kind of the itch that you were trying to scratch, right? Both. Yeah. Both my friends have celiac. Uh, both my friends, both my sons have celiac disease and um, they were born with it at such a young age that there was no gluten-free food in the store at all. Mm -hmm. And so it gave me a really good, you know, view viewpoint from which to watch the gluten-free industry evolve. And I just began to notice all the junk the industry was putting in gluten-free food. And I thought, well, someone's going to do something to change that, but no one ever did. And so finally I thought, well, I guess I'm going to have to do it myself. Now, I will say that even though, you know, that's the reason that I started Kali Power was because of my two sons. It's not the primary reason why people buy Kali Power. Obviously, we're very, you know, we're the number one gluten-free pizza in America, and that's really important. And everything we do will always be gluten-free, but we don't lead with that. We're a great tasting, better for you product that happens to be gluten-free. Yep. Yeah. I remember all the uh, the early days of the gluten-free market and it's mm -hmm. like, you're looking, it's like, first ingredient was just sugar and like everything. Yeah, exactly. And exactly. It, and then like, I would look up recipes to do a gluten-free crust and it was just cheese, like just yeah. cheese that you were just like frying on a pan. Yeah. I'm like, something has to change. <laughs> well, because, and you're right. Cause in the early days of gluten-free, you know, if you think about the products that sort of launched the movement, it didn't have to be, it didn't have to taste good. Mm -hmm. And it certainly didn't have to be better for you. It yep. only needed to tick the box of being gluten-free. Yep. And I sort of thought, well, why can't we ask for more? Mm -hmm. Right. And, and, and it was, is that too much to ask for it to be better for you and actually taste good too? And so that is really what, 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 what helped fuel the, the beginning. Yeah. So when you look at the headlines of Kali Power, everyone kind of sees the same things of like, you know, you went to 100 million in three years mm -hmm. or less. And, you know, you're doing really well now, of course. You've gotten Whole Foods right, aw right away. But I want to kind of hear, you know, what, what are some more funny moments from like the beginning, like the founding stories where you're, you're looking back now and it's just funny how you did things or handled things or tried things? Yeah. Um, boy, there are lots of them. Um, if you do, you mentioned Whole Foods, so I'll start there, you know. Um, I, you know, and, and this is for any of your listeners, if you want to any, if you want to start a food business, you can always pitch the local region of the whole of Whole Foods where you live. So for me, that was Southern California. So I got to, you know, drop off my product, couldn't get a meeting, but literally carry a styrofoam container full of four of the most expensive pizzas, right? Because they were made on the line and uh, drop them off, like almost like you were dropping off your kid at daycare. Uh, and, uh, you know, I just kind of like uh, hoped for the best and hope that the, you know, receptionist would pass them along. And clearly they did. But, um, you know, there was the, 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 the time when Whole Foods made their first order and my truck got locked out from the manufacturing plant to the um, uh, distributor that was supposed to give it to Whole Foods. And so literally my entire life was stuck on a, you know, Midwestern highway in the middle of January, freezing cold. Thank God yeah. it was freezing cold or my product would have melted. But literally that was my entire life stuck in a truck overnight. Mm -hmm. um, so lots of occasions like that, that now you can sort of laugh at, but at the time, you know, tears were, were yeah. much more <laughs> represented. <laughs> Man, I can imagine. What is like, how has the Whole Foods relationship evolved? Like, what was it like in the beginning, early days to now? What does it look like now? Well, you know, look, I'll, I'll always be really grateful to Whole Foods because they took a bet on mm -hmm. me and they brought us into 30 stores, you know, and if they didn't, who knows where Kali Power would be. So they took an early bet on us and now we're, you know, nationally available in Whole Foods and, you know, with a number of different products. But, you know, we're also in 30,000 stores. So mm -hmm. we're in Walmart, and Kroger's and Albertson Safeways and Target and on and on and on. And so... Um, uh, it's really nice having that diversity of retailer representation because, you know, my whole reasoning for wanting to bring Kali Power to market was to really make nutritional um, products accessible 
to all. Uh, and that doesn't matter if you shop at, you know, Whole Foods or Walmart or everywhere in between. Uh, that was really a goal of mine, <clears throat> why I decided to, to leave corporate America. And so, um, you know, it's, it's something I'm very proud of. Yeah, that's amazing. Congratulations. Super Thank impressive. You. How did you, I mean, when they first told you, yes, we're bringing you into 30 stores here, what was it like to scale up? I mean, how many pizzas had you made before that? And then how did you quickly, you know, make sure you had enough to get into 30 stores? Well, it's such a good question. I'll tell you a little bit, you know, you know, you, you, you always remember that moment when you found out. So I was, I happened to be in a Starbucks in Washington, DC when I got the email and, um, <clears throat> oh, we're going to bring you into 30 stores. And literally I screamed out loud and the whole place looked at me and I wanted to buy everybody a latte, but I couldn't afford it. Uh, so, um, but you know, you always remember those times. And then, you know, scaling is really hard because what happens is you have to find a manufacturer that's going to take you on, right, with very little volume. Um, and so everything up to that point is just a bet. All the money that you put in and all the time and energy and resources, that's just a giant bet that this is going to take off. So once I got my first order, I mean... Uh, it was incredibly exciting and, you know, we filled it except, you know, the, the problem with the truck, but other than that, we filled it. Um, and, um, you know, and the rest of the, we, we were at uh, Expo West, uh, in March, uh, so we landed in, in, uh, Whole Foods in February. Uh, we, we were at Expo West in March, March, and that's where we just took off with, all these other retailers who, you know, came by our booth. I think we, it was, there were only three employees at the time at mm -hmm. the company and we must've cooked like 1200 pizzas that weekend. And, uh, it was kind of one of the most extraordinary experiences, um, of my life. And it was really one of those moments. I'll just share that, you know, I almost didn't go to that show. Wow. What was, what was I, swaying you to do something? Well, else? You know, it's interesting because the, when I when I found out about the show, it was all booked up mm -hmm. and I couldn't. So I put myself on the wait list. And then someone from the industry said to me, oh, don't worry about it. Not a big deal. You don't. those shows aren't worth anything. Don't bother. You, they, you know, you shouldn't even go. And I, I thought to myself, do I listen to him or do I just keep keep bothering and keep trying to get off the wait list? And something inside me said. You always got to show up, hmm. you know, wherever you are in life, it's always the things that you didn't show up for that you regret. You never yeah. regret for going. So I just kept hassling the poor guy. I should find out his <laughs> name because I, boy, did I hassle that guy. And finally he called me one day and he said, all right, a spot just opened up. Please leave me alone. And <laughs> it was that spot that opened up that really changed my life. I ordered a banner um, from Zazzle. Uh, I don't even know if that's still around anymore. I bought a, a tablecloth. So. I bought a tablecloth at um, Target and I bought some fresh cauliflower as my booth decoration and I showed up. That's amazing. So, I mean, how have you kind of now used what you know around like that gut feeling and showing up and just do it? Like, do you take that away into your everyday life now? I do. I do. And I think, you know, there's probably lessons there for everyone, because when you start a business, you really, you know, have to be super clear, particularly a, a industry like food. Right. Mm -hmm. Or like it's this is not an industry I knew anything about. Obviously, I knew a little bit about food and that I cooked it, bought it and ate it, but really knew nothing about how the industry worked. And so I knew there was a lot of conventional wisdom that I needed to follow, lots of experts that I needed to listen to, lots of people who had tremendous amounts of experience that, you know, I should really, he you know, heed what they say. But there's also a part, particularly when you're a, a, a founder, is you have to, you know, everybody has to answer for themselves. What rules are you going to break? Mm -hmm. What are you going to do a little bit differently? So, you know, recognize everything that you need to follow, but listen to your, you know, your gut and say, hmm, everybody does it like this. I'm going to try it like this, because if you don't change up some things, you're just going to be like everybody else and who needs an everybody else. Um, and so, um and so I, I, I have carried that through. Um, I've made some really good decisions. I've made some really bad decisions, but, um, 
but I, it, 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 you know, knowing the rules that I wanted to break and follow, it, it's really been key to, to Kali Power's success. Yeah, I love that. That's, yeah, great lesson. So because you had a marketing background, I want to hear about some of your favorite marketing campaigns in the beginning to get Kali Power on the map. And so people even, you know, knew about this amazing new product coming out. So what did yeah. you do? Like, what kind of campaigns were you running to uh, get some interest? Well, in the beginning, we had no campaigns because I had no money. Yeah. And so uh, we relied on a lot of earned media. There was a lot of media that, that that covered us, and that was really great. And then I used all that media to tell all the retailers, look how much consumers, how, mu- how consumers are so excited about us and how the media is so excited about us. And that would generate excitement. And then, you know, I sent a lot of uh, free pizzas out to, uh, you know, people who I would hope would post about it and share. And and, and they certainly did. Um, and then we've done some crazy campaigns over uh, over the years. My goodness. Um, the one I think was uh, probably one of our most successful um, and I think really shows the uh the um you know the quick thinking of our team is um during what right when the pandemic started right and everybody was locked at home and we were a brand that was out and about we had trucks we went to shows we were giving out free pizza left and right and now what do we do in the middle of the pandemic not even in the middle of the pandemic at the beginning of the pandemic Mm -hmm. and so we got a couple of well-known influencers to create some content by making pizzas and sharing. And we shared it on our Instagram live. And we, we happened to get Dan Levy from Schitt's Creek Mm -hmm. just as the show had ended. Like literally it was epic. We want more Dan. You're like, here you go. I'm like, here you go. Making a pizza. (laughs) And it was, uh, it was phenomenal. He was fantastic. Uh, and I think the internet broke that day and, um, you know, people still calls about people still comment about Dan's pizza and, you know, the cheese pull and anybody who understands, um, who has seen the show will understand that, but, um, it was, it was great. And, 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 and I just love that because, you know, in this business, in any startup, you know, you have to be really, really, flexible and malleable to what the world is throwing at you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A global pandemic is one extreme to be sure, but there are a lot less extreme versions and you just have to be like this. And the reason you do is because that's what's so great about being a startup is you can move quickly. You can turn on a dime. You can, you know, upend your marketing campaign overnight. And guess what? The big boys can't. Yeah. The big boys can't do that. So, uh, you know, your, your weakness suddenly becomes a strength and that's pretty extraordinary. Yeah, that's great. Have you felt any friction around that as you've grown bigger and the company's doing really well? Have you kind of started feeling a little bit like constraints sometimes pop up because you're getting bigger? It's such a great, it's a really great question. And it's something I've, I've tried to be very cognizant of. I really have it. Um, and I've worked very hard to try and foster that invite that, you know, risk taking innovation centric environment mm-hmm. in every part of Kali Power, not just the 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 uh, food development and the and the and the food innovation, but you know innovation throughout the entire company. Mm-hmm. And um, so I'd like to think that we haven't lost that. You know, maybe we're a tiny bit slower, but I actually don't think so. I think we've we've maintained that pretty well. Yeah, that's great. So I want to shift and talk a bit about, you know, consumers online and okay. hear your thoughts around, you know, Kali, pa- Kali Power website and, you know, selling directly to consumers. Like, how have you guys thought about that approach? Because you know, everyone, most people who come on this show are D2C brands or bigger brands who have, you know, omni-channel presence. And I was looking up Kali Power and there was this one website that said like, buy CaliPower.com. I don't even know who they are. I don't know if they're like uh-huh. stockpiling Kali Power or something yeah. and then like yeah. shipping it out. I'm no, not there's sure. There's lots of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I was like, wow, does, I'm going to go tell Gail. So I wanted to hear your your thoughts on uh, yeah having an online presence. and. Well, all those brands that you've had <clears throat> on your show, I'm going to venture to guess they're not frozen. No. Um, we've had Yasso, a frozen ice cream or uh-huh. um, yeah, ice cream similar to that. I think there's one other one, but yes, most are not frozen. I'm just saying, and, and frozen <laughs> yeah. is the is the trick. Yep. Yeah, fro- frozen shipping is high. 
It's mm-hmm. very expensive. And, you know, consumers don't necessarily want to pay that. And I don't blame them. Now, are we available on Amazon? Absolutely. Do people buy our products on Amazon all the time? Yes, they do. Mm-hmm. Is it is it is it ever going to be a huge channel for us? Not in the D to C way. For frozen now, as the company evolves and we go into other categories, then for sure it will be. But frozen does make it a little bit tricky. Um, but what we have done really well is we partnered with a lot of the retailer.coms, right? The Kroger.com and Walmart.com and Target.com, so that people can easily order our product for delivery. And that has been, you know, tremendous, particularly during COVID. Yeah. But even now. That's how I order. I've always ordered you guys through uh, Whole Foods, uh, Amazon. Oh, is that right? Yeah, yeah, there you go. It's been great. Good. So, I mean, when thinking about the messaging and like, you know, online, you know, people going online, ordering online, picking up in store, like how did you have mm-hmm. to kind of change how you maybe spoke to your customers or retailers? Or maybe did you have to think about anything different when the buying patterns maybe shifted from everyone going in store and being like, yeah, I always get it in store. And now I'm getting used to kind of buying it online and trying to figure out, is this the same box that I'm buying in, you know, in person? Yeah. It's, it's an interesting question. I mean, I, you know, to be honest with you, the trickiest part was, you know, and this is so laughable, but just getting our name right. Mm-hmm. I mean, if people were inputting cauliflower, they'd either get like frozen florets mm-hmm. or of cauliflower or like frozen blueberries. And yep. it was like, so just, you know, cleaning out the pipes took a long time, particularly for a company that's called cauliflower. Yep. So um, that was a, a huge effort. I think, um, you know, I think the great thing about cauliflower now and particularly, you know, our, our consumers is, you know, they know that there's a number of ways they can get us. You want to get us in store? You can get us on store. You want to get us on delivery? You can get us on delivery. Do you want to get us on Amazon? You can get us on Amazon. Um, and, you know, we're also on Instacart and Fresh Direct and all of those as well. So, you know, we do live in an omni channel world as obviously does our consumer. And we're very, um, you know, aware of that. And we work very hard to make it as, as, as easy and seamless as possible. Yeah. Cool. So how do you view kind of the frozen food landscape right now? Like when you look around, it does seem like there's, I wouldn't call them competitors because they're not as tasty, but there's definitely, you know, a lot of new incumbents popping in that you kind of go there and you're like, Oh, where is the one I want? And it takes a little (laughs) more time than it used to. So yeah. how do you view the market right now? And like, how are you staying competitive? Well, it's interesting. So what happened, so Kali Power was obviously the uh, creator of the category. And, you know, it's a, it's an age old story that, you know, is not limited to frozen pizza, right? Someone creates a category, lots of people enter it, lots of people leave. And then usually, you know, the, 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 the brand that created the category plus one or two others remain. Um, and what happened with calling power is obviously we took off and, you know, had tremendous success. And then the retailers thought, Oh, well, maybe if I bring in this brand, this brand, this brand, and this brand, then I'm going to have that much more success, right? It's going to be completely incremental. And what ended up happening is, um, they realized it wasn't incremental Mm -hmm. and that it was actually cannibalistic, which you know, what's not good for the retailer. So what's happened, that was pretty much 2020. And then what's happened in 2021 is a lot of the retailers have removed a lot of, or have deleted a lot of the ankle biters Mm -hmm. or what have, you know, um, brands that just didn't uh, reach a certain um, level of sales. And, you know, that's, that's, that's been, uh, you know, that's proved well for us. Um, you know, but I, I, I really think, you know, you hit the nail on the head. So that's, that's from a category perspective, but I think you hit the nail on the head when, you know, you talked about, and I very much appreciate it. um, You you said, well, you know, where's the tasty cauliflower? Um, you know, look, competition is going to happen no matter what. And, you know, the only thing that happens when you look behind you is you stumble. Mm-hmm. So we've got our eyes forward. We're not, we're not, we're not looking at all the Im- imitators. We're not looking at all the competitors. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're driving ahead and we're putting everything that we have into, um, you know, ensuring that we have the best product on the market. And we do. And, yep. and that we, and that people, and, you know, sometimes people are promiscuous, right? We hear it all the time. Oh, I tried another one and I came back to call it. Great. 
try another one, come back. You know, I'm like, yeah, you want to date around? Go ahead, date around. I know you'll end up dating me and we'll get married and live happily ever after. And that's usually <laughs> what happens. And I love it. But the onus is on us because we have to make sure that the product always delivers. And that's what we focus on. We don't, we don't focus that much on the, on the competition. Yeah. Have you had to adjust your packaging to connect with people in a different way? Because at one point I definitely saw some people have their packaging look kind of similar to yours. Do where you we, think? Yeah, where yeah. we accidentally bought it and I brought it home. And I'm like, what is this? This is not <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, uh, I, I have heard that a lot too. Yes, uh, my mother used to say, you know, uh, they're only jealous, honey. Um, <laughs> and that just means they like you. Yep, um, there you go. <laughs> and so, uh, but yes, it is frustrating. Um, we did recently in early 2021, we have our new stone fired pizza on, and we put that in new packaging, uh, which I think is is further uh, well delineated. You know, we are the only one to have the, the black uh, letter memes on the front of our box, which, you know, keep it light, keep it funny, you know, make you smile because pizza should make you smile. And, um, and, you know, and I think our, our, our new packaging has, has worked out very well. Yeah, I agree. So I want to dive a bit deeper into kind of working with retailers because so Mm -hmm. many people on here, you know, they're still wondering maybe how to break into that. Um, or they have advice. And I always am wondering like, is this advice that other people would give? So what are some lessons maybe from this, this past year or two from working with retailers and getting in so many different stores, like if you were to look back and do anything over again, whether it's deals or arrangements or how you have something set up, is there anything that's like pretty in the weeds that you think like if someone's going and exploring this path right now, this one piece of advice would really help them or this one thing to avoid would really help them? Uh, The one piece of advice that I did that I think would help people, um, and maybe it's similar to the advice I gave earlier, you know, you always show up. Mm-hmm. And early on, I went to every single sales meeting for Collie Power, every single one. There were there were times when I was flying to three and four cities a week. Wow. Um, but I showed up because I want them because no one, no one can sell a product like the founder. I mean, yeah. that's my third child. Collie Power is my third child. And so uh, I think people really like and appreciate to hear the vision and to hear how the product was born and to hear your you know, hopes and dreams for this product and why it's different than anything else and why the retailers should bring it in and why the consumers are great gravitate toward it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I always think the more interaction a founder can have with the retailer, the better. Yep. Yeah. I love that. That's great advice. What big moonshot bets are you making right now that, you know, you're not sure if it's going to have a big successful outcome, but you guys are trying things out, seeing what might stick. We have a couple of products coming out. I I can't talk about it right now, but uh, is it a moonshot? Maybe. Maybe yeah. it's a moonshot. Okay. I don't know. I like it. Uh, I like that term. Uh, maybe it's a moonshot. But then again, you know, all of Collie Power was a moonshot. Like, yeah. I never knew it would be like this. I thought I could have a little business, mm-hmm. maybe, you know, send my sick kids to school and just work for myself. And and that would be that. So, you know, it's all the whole thing's already a moonshot. Everything mm-hmm. else is just gravy. But um, I do believe that, you know, because we're Collie Power, we got to take risks. Mm-hmm. You know, and they're not always successful, but we have to take them. It is, it is, it is, it is in our ethos. It is our reason to be. And, um, you know, if not us, then who? Yep. That's great. So what kind of risks are you taking outside of new product development? What mm-hmm. are some things you're exploring right now? Um, let's see. Um, trying to think of things I can talk about. Uh, yeah. You know what? You, you know what? A lot of it, to be honest with you, you know, I look, we're, we're not that old. I think people look at our size and they think we're much older than we are. And so, mm-hmm. you know, to be honest with you, some of what we're doing right now is just building the plane because mm-hmm. we've been flying it, but it's been rickety, right? So we're putting a lot of the things in place that quite frankly, we should have had a long time ago, but we didn't have the money for, we didn't have the resources. We didn't have the know-how. We didn't know we needed it. Now we do. And yep. so now we're, 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 we're building, you know, the, the, the support behind this rocket ship to make sure we can continue on our uh, trajectory. So is it, you know, is it that exciting? You know, probably not. Is it, is it as important as hell? You bet it is. Yep. Um, and, you know, I think Collie Power is, is, is really 
uh, remarkable or uh, because we'll have both. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I can only imagine when you've been, you know, flying the plane and there's a bunch of things where you're like, this is all kind of duct taped together. Yeah, exactly. Don't look over here. Right? Yeah. Don't look here. Look over here. Look over here. But yeah, exactly. now's the time to actually build the foundation. Yeah. I want to hear how you prioritize because this is actually a theme. I was just talking to the North Face oh. earlier and they were saying the same thing. They're like, now is actually oh, really? our time to build the foundation right now. We're just trying yeah. to make sure our whole back end works. We're not doing some shiny things. Yeah. We're working on the unsexy things. And exactly. then now you're saying this too. So exactly. how did you go through and prioritize stuff when I'm sure there's like a very big list of things that had to be taken care of? It is a big list. You know, we looked at our biggest pain points, right? You know, what, where did we, where were we really hurt? What, 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 where were we unable to compete? You know, a lot of it, to be honest with you, is data driven. We needed more data. We just mm -hmm. needed all kinds of information that we didn't have. We needed a lot of platforms, a lot of technology to help us fuel and not just you know, as a, as a, as a, as a, you know, that we were to support us, like, you know, as if from the beginning, but even stuff that we did at the beginning, we're now, we've now outgrown. So we've had to like, you know, upgrade, you know, so many different platforms three times because, you know, we're just, we outgrew it. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it's a lot of, it's a lot of that. Got it. So you're mentioning data. I want to hear like, what kind of data were you missing that you were, you know, realizing, okay, now I actually need to have this. So was it first party data because you were working through retailers where you weren't it getting everything it you wanted? Was, it, it, was, it was both. It was first party data. It was, you know, industry data, category data, competitive data. I mean, all kinds of things. And then, you know, data driving our um, supply chain and, you know, uh, and our operations and, and, and things that just help us, you know, run more smoothly, really. Yeah. I mean, there's enough out there in the world to throw bumps in the road as yeah. it is. We didn't need to make our own. So yeah, that's great. And how are you thinking about now attracting new customers? Like what are the best ways that you're finding new customers? Because to me, I'm like the brand awareness seems already there. But then every once in a while, you meet people who maybe don't even understand that category. They're still going with like oh the old school gosh. pizza. <laughs> so. You know what? It's funny because, you know, uh, Kali Power, to thank you, has come a long way in a short amount of time. But our unaided awareness is low. Yeah. There is still huge growth opportunity for Colibar. So we have a lot of demand generation that we do to raise awareness and brand awareness. And there's a lot coming in the new year toward that end, which I think will be really good. Um, and I'm excited. And particularly as we increase our number of products, because, you know, there are people who buy our chicken who don't even know we make pizza. Mm -hmm. So, um, and you know, we want our, the people who buy our pizza to know, Hey, guess what? We make, what we, we make pasta now. Yeah. So it's a lot of like cross cross purchase and, and, you know, awareness. So it's awareness to new consumers, but also to our current consumer base who may not know about all of our other magnificent products. Yeah. Is the cross promotion happening like within the packaging of like, Hey, you bought our pizza now go check this out as well. Here's a coupon. It's hard to do. It, it is hard to do on the pack. You, you, there are some things that you can do and we, we do, but some of it is hard to do on packaging because you can't control where it ends up. And so if you're in a retailer that sells your pizza, but not your pasta and you say, Oh, go buy our pasta, you know, that's mm -hmm. challenging. So, yep. you, so there, there are some things you can do, but you know, it, it, there are challenges around that as well. I always think about when I buy something at a retailer and they have that little like sticky piece of tape yes. looking coupon on it. It's like now yeah, go and here and I'm like, it off. is this for now? Later? I'm very confused. Yeah, Do I just throw this away? <laughs> no, it's actually for now. So, yeah. so you should use those now. Uh, yeah. Good yeah. to know. Yeah. yeah I always look at that. I'm like, now. is this mine? Is this pretend? <laughs> it is yours. Yeah, no. Peel it off. Doesn't get easier than that. <laughs> so where are you hoping to be in the next like one to two years? What's your vision right now? Uh, sleep sounds good. Yeah, no, sleep. Uh, that sounds great too. Good for me too. Right. So, so, so I'm, yeah. Um, no, I'm kidding. Uh, one to two years. Uh, I think, you know, look, we, um, uh, the world is kind of our oyster, which is nice, uh, different, uh, perhaps different geographies, definitely different parts of the grocery store, mm -hmm. uh, different, uh, we, we're exploring and have already put into use a number of different vegetables. In fact, our, um, our new rice cups, 
or I'm sorry, our new breakfast cups um, include a vegetable that we've never even used before, broccoli, which is really exciting. So diversity of vegetables, diversity of places, um, of aisles in the grocery store, uh, and, you know, and um, continued innovation, which is um, and both within pizza, but outside of pizza as well. Yeah, amazing. Okay, let's shift over to the lightning round. The lightning round okay. is brought to you by Salesforce Commerce Cloud. This is where okay. I ask you a question and you have a minute okay. or less to answer. Ooh, Are you ready, Gail? Okay, I guess I'm ready. Yes. Okay. First, what's the funniest ingredient you maybe tried in your recipe when you were first starting out with Kali Power? Like, is there any ingredient where you're like, that was weird, I tried that, or that ended up tasting really funny? Uh, not for the first pizza, but we did do something like, oh, I can't even remember. It's like tiger nut silk something. It was, it didn't taste good. I don't even know what that is. Flour or something like that. Yeah, no, I didn't either. And we ended up not using it. So there you go. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Tiger nut flour. Now I kind of want to check it out and see if I can like make a cookie out of it or something. Maybe you can. (laughs) What's up next on your reading list? Next up on my reading list is, um, I tell you what, I started a book and I am on the last chapter and I've been on the last chapter for about four months now. So I need to really, I really want to finish the last chapter. Uh, and I know this sounds so boring and I'm really embarrassed to say it, but it's a book about the grocery industry, but it's not, it sounds really boring. Like, Oh my gosh. But what makes it so exciting is it really just shows the role that food has had in people's lives. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's really what I love about it. So I'm not, I don't want people to think, Oh my God, she's obsessed with groceries. I'm really not, (laughs) but it's, I'm obsessed with food. Yeah. So it's a page turner until the last. It's a page turner. (laughs) Yes, exactly. And then like all hell breaks loose. It's been busy. We've been so busy. It's embarrassing to admit. I'm sorry. (laughs) Well, we'll have to check that out. Do you remember the name? Because now I'm actually kind of. It's called Grocery. Oh, it's just called Grocery. grocery. Wow. It's called Grocery. And it was actually (laughs) in the New York Times bestseller list in my defense. So oh, it was well, a really, okay. really good book. Check it out. You don't have out. to defend it. Come on. Yeah, I don't have to defend it. And the, the New York Times said it, so it must be true. So if you had a podcast, what would it be about and who would your first guest be? That is a good question. Um, what would it be about? It would be about risk-taking. Okay. I think. And, not, and not just not just as it relates to companies, but Mm -hmm. as it relates to life. You know, I just, I was just having a conversation with someone who uh, uh, broke up with someone in their life. And I said to them, you know, the easiest thing, the easiest thing is to stay. The hardest thing is to leave. And I think that's so true. And I, I apply it to my own life in how I started Kali Power. And I think we can all apply it to every part of our life. I There's a famous quote that inspires me every day. And it's, you know, drowning is not what happens when you fall in the water. It's what happens when you stay there. Mm, that's a good one. I love that. Wow. Okay. Next question. Okay. What's, what's one thing you don't understand today, but wish you did? Uh, one thing I don't understand today, but wish I did, um, oh my gosh, this is tough. I don't know. All of our supply chain issues. You and everyone else. (laughs) Me and everyone else. I do get it. I do understand it. I don't understand why the truck just can't come and pick it up. (laughs) Uh, it's it's something we struggle with. I'm like everybody in this industry right now is struggling with and, you know, some, sometimes people just don't show up and, um, it's heartbreaking. And, um, so yeah, I, I guess intuitively I understand it, but still beating my head against a wall. Yeah. Yeah. That's, a lot of people have said that. So you're oh, really? Okay, good. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, a good lot enough. of people. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And the last one, what's okay. the most memorable thing someone's done for you? Um, I might start crying. It's okay. But it probably my dad who had 
who came here with nothing and built this small, small business in San Francisco, bought a house in the early 1970s for $62,000 in the middle of San Francisco. And he left when he passed away, he left me the house and I sold it and I put every last dime into Kali Power. And Kali Power would not exist today if it wasn't for that little pink house. Hmm. And um, it's uh, the the hard part is he he didn't know what that house did for me. Mm -hmm. Although here's the he might. And you know what? Today's his birthday. Today would have been his birthday. Today would have been his birthday. So I hope dad, if you're listening. He definitely is. Thank you for thank you for the house. Wow. Do you have a picture of that house that you like have, you know, in your house? I do have a picture. I do have yeah. a picture. It's a tiny little pink house. And um yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Well, that is the best way to end this episode. So Gail, thank you so much for coming on here, sharing your story. It's amazing, it's powerful, and I loved every minute. So where can people find out more about you and Kali Power? Well, to find out more about Kali Power, you can go to eatkalipower.com or you can go to Kali Power on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter. And can I offer a little special something for your listeners? Excellent. So anyone who uh, DMs us at any of our social channels at Kali Power, um, all you have to say is next in commerce and we will send you a free coupon for any free product. I mean, who doesn't love free? I'm doing it right now. Uh, Please do. You're not allowed. There might even be two for you. Go go, go for it, Stephanie. Yes. Thank you, Gail, so much. This was a pleasure. Thank you. Pleasure's all mine.